Hi guys, I'm back again. Sorry about that. I was just getting rather confused because I got a notification. So it really uh, confused me there. But it's great. We've got Kelly Sibley tonight, today. And it's great that you're joining in. Nice to see you, Dave. Hopefully everyone else will rejoin. Yeah, sorry about that, Kelly. It's great that we've got her on board and it's our 11th one, which is fantastic. You know, and we've got a few more next week. I'm just adding Kelly now. Hello! Hey, how are <laughs> you? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you very much. Sorry about that. My phone just completely froze. No, and I was getting confused because it came up with a notification, which it's never done, saying <laughs> British Army Table Tennis. So I was thinking I was on the wrong account. So I was like, look at that. And no up. worries. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. No, no, it's great. You know, we, as you've seen, we've had a great lineup. So um, yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah, it's just been great, and um, it's nice to have you on board as well. You know, pleasure. So, how are you? Yeah, good. I was going to say, how are you coping with lockdown and everything? It's so strange, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's bizarre. Um, ju yeah, just so surreal. Really, it's kind mm. of like a a weird version of like Groundhog Day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's fine um it's actually quite nice because i get to spend some time with uh laura and jack uh he's 10 months today which has just completely flown by so it's been quite nice to get some kind of like three months at home um with him because obviously being in and out and uh working quite a bit coaching etc you don't really get to spend good quality time with them so yeah it's been it's been really nice, actually. How about yourself? How's lockdown treating you? Yeah, I can't complain. You know, I've got a laptop that I'm working on, so it's been a bit manic the last couple of days. <laughs> trying to keep me busy, but um, yeah, obviously doing a bit of the media on top of that, which I don't mind doing. You know, it's great to get in touch with you guys. But yeah, you know, and try to enjoy the weather. We had that lovely spell, didn't we? It was amazing. Yeah, it's just gone a bit dull now, but hopefully the weather will pick up again. Yeah. It Have, seems to, as you know, they've... Yeah, as they've like started to release lockdown, the weather's just gone completely downhill. But fingers crossed, it picks up again. Yeah, it's always the way that though, isn't it? It's just so, you know, what can you do? <laughs> British weather? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's um, obviously, you're probably aware with British Army table tennis, I've said this to a lot of the players, um, we have like beginners who haven't even seen a bat probably to, you know, to people that are national league level, so we've got a good range now. Yeah. But are you happy to do an introduction just to see, just so our players know a bit more about you? Like, yeah, that's fine. That? Um, so yeah, hi everybody, my name's Kelly Sibley, uh, former England senior number one, uh, five times English uh, senior woman champion, um, two bronze uh, medals at the Commonwealth Games, um, and I was very lucky to compete at the London 2012 uh, Olympic Games. Um, retired in uh, 2018 after the Commonwealth in the Gold Coast, and now I am head coach at the University of Nottingham. Uh, so coaching the table tennis team there that we've got um which is really really good really enjoying it we've got some great players in now um and just can't wait to get back into the hall really and see see all the guys and so we can really push on yeah no that's a fantastic introduction so many questions off that <laughs> so where do i start you know um obviously olympics and you know commonwealth games what what's that like you know share your experiences the village and stuff like that yeah uh it's amazing i mean obviously every sports person's dream is to compete at the highest level um obviously you can't get much higher than the olympics um so to compete at an olympic games obviously fantastic such a dream come true but to compete at your home games in london was just unreal um i remember I was very lucky to go to the open ceremony in London wow. um, and to walk out into the stadium when they announced Great Britain, just the hairs on the back of your neck, just, oh, it was just one of those experiences that will live with me forever. Um, and obviously competing for GB um, on home soil again was just, was just amazing, really. Um, and obviously to compete at a Commonwealth Games to represent England, amazing once again but to actually win some two bronze medals at the commonwealths again it was just a dream come true 
Yeah, definitely. You've got so many titles and, you know, is it hard to pick your favourite moment or favourite sort of achievement or is it hard to say? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. I think I have two that really stick out. Mm. Um, obviously, the first time that I won um, my senior national title, um, I think I'd got to the final maybe two or three times before before that. And it was kind of one of those, oh my gosh, is it ever going to happen? Am yeah. I ever going to cross that line? Um, so yeah. when I won the first senior title there, that was an achievement that will live with me forever. Um, everybody wants to be national ch uh, national champion. Um, so that's one moment that will always live live with me. Um, the second one would be the bronze medal at the 2014 Commonwealth Games, where, where I got a mixed double, uh, a bronze medal in the mixed doubles with mm. Daniel Reed. Okay. Um, because previously at the Commonwealth Games, we lost in the playoff match for a bronze medal uh, in the okay. women's team. Um, and I was the person, it was 2-2, two -two, uh, and I was the person that went on to play the final match. Oh. Um, yeah, and I lost 3-2. Two -two, two. So that was probably one of the hardest moments of my table tennis career. Um, it was... I, I was really low after that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so to change it around at the next games four years later um, and to come away with a bronze medal, um, yeah, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, I can only imagine. So some of our players, you know, whatever level they come down, a lot of them struggle with the mental side, I think. Yeah. Um, obviously one point at a time and all that. Do you have any tips for them at all? Or um literally that it's very it sounds so simple and just just take your time and literally take it one point at a time because you can't change the past it, that that point's gone uh, or if you've lost that game it's completely gone um and you can't really try and think too far ahead mm. so you literally just need to stay in the moment um and just to play one ball at a time um and i think if you can try and clear your mind and just think about that process um that will help you massively and i think that that was the difference from the 2014 uh, the 2010 games where i lost in the playoff match uh, to what i did differently in the 2014 uh playoff match for the bronze medal i kind of tr it's really difficult to do but you have to just try and forget about the outcome yeah, and you just need to just take it one point at a time. No, that's great advice. So, um, obviously, do you miss competing at a high level and stuff like that, or you sort of, you know, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I do miss competing. I th I'm a very competitive person. Yeah. Um, even so, if I'm playing a game with my niece who's nine, I, want, I always want to win. Um, and if I'm ever playing some of the guys in the uh, practice hall at the university. I, I always want to beat them. Um, so, yeah, that competitive edge will always stay with me, I think. I think if you've played at a, a high level, um, I think that will always live live within you. So, yeah, if, if I'm playing cards or playing table tennis, I always want to win. That's good. You've got to have a competitive <laughs> spirit. I like it. Someone's got you know, a table tennis player called Tommy. Well, you know, that's we need a bit more info than just Tommy, you know. <laughs> Uh, if it's Tommy from, who used to be at Uni of Nottingham, then Nottingham. yes. But if it's not, then I need a little bit more. Yeah, I think it says B, BZ Table Tennis Fitness. So I don't know if that rings a bell. Yeah, no, not sure. Yeah, I just thought I'd ask anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love the question. So, um, yeah, so I can't read my notes right now. <laughs> did, you, did, you always, did you always want to coach after you finished competing or...? Uh, yeah, yes, that was one thing that I wanted to do. I always wanted to give back to the sport. Mm. So whether that would be club level, university level, or obviously on an England level, um, I think it's really important to try and give back and to try and be a, a role model to the female players um, because that's something that I really want to try and push. Um, it, there's not that many females playing uh, table tennis or kind of at the high level so okay. to tr really want to try and uh, push that on and just to try and get as many women playing table tennis as much as possible really no that's a great I um you know idea and good vision I'll come back to that in a sec but he's just said he used to play with urban table tennis does that ring a bell 
the Tommy that I know, yeah, is at Urban. Yeah, so it must be that one then, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah no worries. So, um, so how did the opportunity to become head coach at Nottingham come about? Did you study there or did you just, you know, how um, did about? I was very lucky to uh, be given the role as practice partner to be uh, sparring partners uh, before in the lead up to the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how I got my foot in the door, let's say. Um, so I was practice partner for them for about two years. Um, and then after that, I was very lucky um, to be given the head coach role. Um, and yeah, like I absolutely love working for the university. Um, we've got a good group of players. Um, We've got a good range of players as well. We've got the likes of Tintin Ho there, uh, David Macbeth. Um, so we have a really high standard of players that are there. Um, and we have really good depth in the in the club as well. So I think last year we had around 36 to 40 players um, on the, in the performance club itself. Um, and then obviously we have the social side as well. So we have a really good mix of players there. Um, and it's just a really good environment. Everybody has a little bit of banter with, with everybody. Um, and yeah, it's just really good fun. So hopefully, fingers crossed, as soon as we can get back to it, I'm really looking forward to pushing on with those guys. Yeah, I bet you can't wait. Um, you said Tommy Griffins, so hopefully we can move on from that one now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But, so, um, yeah, so I've had um, a few questions from uh, Nottingham University Table Tennis Club, <sighs> which is nice. And said, I know, keeping you on your toes, but uh, this was offline. Okay. Uh, but which players have you enjoyed coaching the most? That's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Put you on the spot. Can I say everybody? Is that okay? I think that's cheating. Um, yeah, it's cheating. <laughs> well, as he's watching, I think he's watching, he sent in a couple of questions. Obviously, the legend that is Liam McTiernan. I've got to say him. Um, he is probably the face of University of Nottingham Table Tennis, let's say. He's done so much for the club. He, he just... He is a guy that you just want in your training hall. He brings so much energy into the sessions. Um, and I know that we've had some big battles as well, big matches. And again, that's when I talk about my competitive edge coming in. Really don't want to lose. Um, so, yeah, that's good fun. Obviously, Tintin. Um, we go back as well, being England teammates. So that's quite nice, actually, yeah. to still being able to kind of um, train with her and to try and kind of pass my experiences as a senior player onto Tintin. Um, and I think we have a really good relationship that way. Um, but all the guys, like I've said at uni, there's a, they're a great bunch of guys um, there. Um, and it's yeah, just great fun to, to have sessions with them all. Oh, that's fantastic. And then they asked another one. So which coaches have you enjoyed playing under the most and enjoyed working with? Tough questions, aren't they? Yeah, very tough. <laughs> um, well, I've kind. Of, I would have to say um, Alan Cook. Um, he's been my coach right from when I first moved to the national centre when I was about twelve, mm. um, and he's yeah, he's always been there uh, for me as a player and now in my coaching career like as a coaching mentor. So I owe a lot to to Alan um for for my journey he's been there um like i said as a coach but also as a friend if i'm struggling found when i've been finding things difficult um on and off the table and i think that's really important as a player coach relationship to to have somebody like that that you can speak openly to yeah definitely yeah definitely see the big shot table tennis obviously doing the olympics and commonwealth games and stuff have you met any you must have met some famous people and who was your favorite um yeah i've met i don't really want to name drop though i feel like i'm just name dropping yeah, go for it. Um, so i was very lucky to have a conversation with usain bolt at the london 2012 wow. olympic games that was in the canteen hall mainly because i wanted to see what he was eating <laughs> <But>. <laughs> um yeah uh tom daly uh mo farah rebecca mm -hmm. adlington um and my favorite one probably would be like i mentioned earlier about the opening ceremony at the olympics um just before gb was about to walk out mm -hmm. 
we I don't know how, but we found ourselves near the front and I just okay. looked to my right and it was Chris Hoy and he was the flag bearer for G B at the Olympics. Oh, wow. And he, he he got handed the flag and he, his face just went white. And I was just like, I've got to say something. I was just like, are you okay? And he was like, no, I am petrified. And I was like, you'll be fine. And then we just got told to walk out. And yeah, again, just to even to be stood ne- that close to, to such a legend was just fantastic. I can imagine. Um, so what sports stars or, you know, inspire you you know or I assume they still do now would you say um when I was younger um I really used to look up to um Dame Kelly Holmes yeah um I read her autobiography and just some of the things that were in there just I could relate to um so she was a massive uh sporting idol let's let's say for myself when I was growing up Oh, and even still now, really. Oh, that's amazing. So Liam's, you know, he's on fire tonight. <laughs> he on really is. Tonight, I keep saying tonight, it's this afternoon. <laughs> he's always on fire. <laughs> um, what's your vision for the future of University of Nottingham table tennis? So the vision next is, of course, now we've completely taken over the UK. Um, I feel like we have the best programme. Uh, we have the best players. Um, we've been lucky enough to win the league and the cup over the last few years. Um, the next vision is to take over Europe and to hopefully bring back gold medals at the European University Championships. Um, I honestly believe that we can do that yeah. with the players that we've got and with the programme that we have there. Um, it's not going to be easy, but like I said, the players that I have there are fantastic. They're really hard working. They're driven. So... I, I see why not that like why that can't happen um so yeah that's the next goal so watch this space Liam McTiernan we're going to be taking over Europe come on <laughs> <laughs> no but it's I think it's impressive because they're having to study at the same time aren't they so oh yeah you know uh, it's dedicated like, fair play to them they've some of them are like nine o'clock till till five just lectures um with no break and then they just and we have a session five till eight um and they just come in and they just get their head down and they just they give their all really um yeah and i'm just so proud of them all um they have a they have a a great love for the sport and they respect the university and like i said yeah they're just great to work (laughs) great to work with and i've just noticed tintin's comment there so tintin is studying medicine yes. so she is one of the students that is literally nine till five yes. monday to friday bless her so we yes. have a session starting six thirty or 7 in the morning wow. until wow. half eight so then she can go off and study all day long and then tins comes back and practices yep. five till eight so her day is chock-a-block i was gonna say that's dedication and uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, impressive. So, um, University uh, Nottingham Table Tennis has said, uh, no, it's a nice one. It's uh, <laughs> the you guys against Army Table Tennis make it happen. I, Absolutely. I, I think we should. Yeah. And maybe we could do something for the NHS. Let's raise some funds or something. Let's get it. No, that's a fantastic idea. You know, I think we're up for that. You know, we want to get more fixtures and we've had a few people requesting sort of training camps fixtures and it's fantastic. So we can add that to the list and then maybe we try on different other universities as well. You know, you you guys could be the star of that. 100%. Yeah, that's a great idea. UON Table Tennis. I like it. Absolutely. Bring it on. We're very competitive too, you know. You should see some of the guys and the lasses. We're really competitive. You should see us at the inter-services against the RAF and Navy. uh, Obviously, we're very, uh, we get on and stuff, but then once we compete, that's it. Oh, 100%. Friends off the table, but rivals on the table. Of course. But um, it it was nice when we smashed them 10-0 last champs, the females. It was amazing feeling. (laughs) And I bet you never let them forget it either, do you? We we can't, you know, because (laughs) they had all the gear, the towel, the tracksuits, everything. And we just rock up with... Uh, shorts and a top we've got a track for this upcoming season but it's just priceless but you know what they were very gracious in defeat but the uh rough men won but we're getting closer to them okay <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but yeah, I love the competitiveness. It's great. Absolutely. Uh, but um, oh, Dave has put a nice little story here. Uh, Fave Ke Kelly stories when I was in a bit of a pickle and lost my crutches and Kelly acted like a human limb, oh, sorry, human <laughs> climbing frame <laughs> for me to walk properly. Forever grateful. <laughs> Accidentally pulled her top down, I think. Shocking. Oh my God. <laughs> Save hilarious. that for after the watershed. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so obviously happy to help out with table tennis coaching advice, but also here to be a human crutch. Absolutely no problem. It's nice that like, you're just coming across as a really helpful person. It's amazing. Yep. Helping everybody. You can't, you can guarantee on Dave. I thought he'd ask a question at me, but he hasn't. Um, what a legend. He is. He's hilarious. I'm, I've got a live with him on Monday, so I need to, have, oh, I need to have, get my brain in gear ready for that one. <laughs> so someone asked, um, was it hard to stop playing and, and then go into sort of start coaching? Did you find it quite a hard switch? Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, because obviously, like I said before, being competitive, um, and straight after the Commonwealth, in my mind, I always knew that was kind of what I was going to finish on um, and I felt quite a lot of pressure really going into that games because you have a dream don't you that you want to finish on such a high yeah um, so in the back of my mind I kept thinking well what if what if we just go out in the first round and that that's it like that's how I that's how I end my career um, but then obviously once you get once you get there and you get training and stuff that kind of just goes out the window and you just focus on the job in hand um but straight after the commonwealth was the world championships yeah. so some people kept saying like oh you just want to do one more because it's only a week after um but in my mind i just knew that that was going to be the last competition that i wanted to play but as soon as i <laughs> i got home and i announced it sorry laughing oh at my dave. god sorry. dave <laughs> I won't um, read that one out. Don't I'll <laughs> let you read it out. <laughs> um, as soon as I got home, and obviously I announced my retirement, and then I saw the girls fly off to the world, that was quite difficult because a part of me, obviously, I, I just spent so much time with them, yeah. um, and a part of me did want to be to be competing still, but um, it was the right time at, the, at that time to kind of call it quits yeah. let's say because obviously yeah. it was no secret at that time like me and Laura wanted to start a family and yeah. things just change and yes. life life happens um and I think it yeah it's, it wasn't straightforward with how we were gonna have yeah. a baby so obviously I wanted to be I wanted to be here um a lot more uh, so it just made sense to kind of call it quits after the Commonwealth and then just focus on my coaching in Nottingham just so then I could um, focus on family life let's say. Yeah no it makes complete sense so going back to the start so give a 30 second uh, how did you get involved with table tennis? Um, yeah. So I got involved I started playing when I was eight so not that long ago no <laughs> all those years ago um because my mum used to play okay. so my mum used to play county for warwickshire um back at our um and she used to play for the local club that i used to play for lillington free church back in mm -hmm. leamington so um yeah i just went there once a week to start with found out that i liked it and that I could get a couple of balls on the table um, and just took it from there, really. And yeah. let's say followed in my mum's footsteps. That's awesome. Um, did you do any other sports or was it just table tennis? I used to play football. Oh, okay. So I used to play table tennis and football. Um, and then I had to, when I was about 11, I had to make a decision which one did I want to choose. Um, and I guess because of my, because my mum used to play table tennis, um, I... I chose table tennis and then a year later I got selected to live at the National Table Tennis Academy which at the time was in Nottingham so yeah. I had to move away from home when I was 12. Yeah. Um, Did you find that easy or not so much? <laughs> not so much at the start. No, I um, can imagine you know. It's... Yeah it's quite scary for a 12 year old just to go and completely yeah. leave home um, because before that 
obviously I hadn't really been anywhere. I'd always been just at home. Um, so to have that choice or have that option, let's say, um, to go and li live there and train full time and obviously go to school there. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really big decision, but I just remember having a conversation with my parents about if I want to be good and if I want to let play at the Olympics and achieve something great, that's something I had to do. Yeah, um, I and I could try it. And if I didn't like it, I can always come home. And I just never wanted to just not take that opportunity because I would hate to have been, what if? What if I had, do you know what I mean? So no, I do, yeah. um, that was a really difficult decision, but I, I went with it. And I remember ringing my mum every Monday no. for like the first month yeah. and a half in the morning before I went yeah. to school just like I can't do it I can't do it and she yeah. was like you can you can and then since then I haven't been back so <laughs> yeah. no no it makes complete sense because when I joined the army at 18 you know that's even I'm slightly older obviously I was nervous like getting on that train I was like I don't know what I'm doing you know yeah. I'm like is this the right decision you know getting you know screamed at in training and obviously getting conditioned to that sort of work lifestyle so I completely get it but yeah. someone's I think Ross has just asked if Jack isn't going to play table tennis what's what is he gonna play um good question uh <laughs> or is it table tennis that's it <laughs> no um obviously whatever sport he wants to play um it would be great to kind of get him on the table just to have a little bit of a, a knockabout um, but I'm not going to force him into playing table tennis. Um, if he wants to play tennis or uh, golf, football, cricket, maybe somewhere that could, you know, that's a lot of money. So then we can just sit back, relax, like on a beach somewhere with a cocktail. So then he can, you know, just <laughs> make them make the money. Yeah, no, someone's just asked for a shout out. Are you happy to do that? I think it's yes that's Lillington so that's the club yes. that I used to play for um oh, that's nice. so yeah Chris Mulligan I think that is Lillington Free Church so big shout out to them oh that's fantastic great group of people <laughs> someone's put that's a lie you don't want him anywhere near a table <laughs> you'll be competing you'll be up there you'll be maybe we could play mixed doubles when he's older <laughs> gosh yeah. I'll be oh, I'll be getting on then Oh dear, lost my train of thought now. It happens a lot. <laughs> uh, I think um, how how does being part of sport and like being an athlete did it help your personal development? Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think obviously moving away at the age of twelve, I had to grow up quite quickly, <laughs> um, yeah. and obviously being away from my friends and my family. Um, like I said before, that was a really difficult decision um and also before that before I moved away it was kind of all my friends were having like sleepovers and yeah. parties and I, I, I couldn't go to those because I had to go train not had to go training but I wanted to 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 go training and I knew that that's what I had to do I had to miss out on all those like niceties really because I wanted to be the best um, and I, th I was really lucky to go to China at, when I was yeah. 13. Um, and again, that's just a, an amazing life experience that if, you ha if people have been to China, they will realise how much of an experience that is. Yeah. Um, and obviously I've been to like Japan, um, Korea, India, um, a lot of countries that I just wouldn't have dreamt about going to if I hadn't without table tennis um so I think it it does make you uh become more mature a lot more quickly really and you develop your life skills a lot more quickly as well no yeah, that's a great answer so who's your favorite table tennis player on the tour right now oh can I say Tintin Ho yeah go she's for it. <laughs> I love it I love it so um what rubbers and bats do you use? So obviously, we, like I say, for someone like myself, um, Ryan Jenkins laughed at the bat I was using. And then the oh, minute, really? yeah, no, he's being, you know, he's just being nice. But uh, yeah, he's, the minute the camera came, he's like, give me my bat back. <laughs> yeah, so how, yeah. What, 
Yeah, just advice on that because, you know, some of our players just go to Sports Direct and get, you know, when do you start looking at different sort of bats? Yeah, that? it's really difficult because obviously they're really expensive. Um, so for me, I use a T-Mobile Spirit, which they don't make anymore, I believe, the, the Blade. Um, but And then Tenergy 05, both sides. Um, I think for me, that's the perfect match. Um, it's It suits my game. But, yeah, I completely understand why people do go to Sports Direct or those type of shops because it is very, very expensive. Um, like Tenergy, obviously really expensive, and the blades, mm -hmm. the top quality blades are. Um, but I think if you start to, when you want to get better and you feel like you want to invest, then there are some cheaper options, I believe, um, Obviously, I'm going to promote T-Sport because I was sponsored by them. Yeah. Um, but they are there are some options on there. Um, Brian Jenkins does have a blade, doesn't he? As, as well. Was he trying to promote his blade on his chat? Um, I think so. It was that long ago, I can't remember. <laughs> it was the first one I did. And I had the microwave beeping away. I forgot to turn it off. So you get better the more you do these lives. So I'm glad you find that funny. But yeah, it's, it's the living in life of lockdown. Do you know what I mean? Beep, beep. I was just like, this isn't going to happen again. So luckily, it's not happened again. But um, you've got to have a laugh, haven't you, while you're in lockdown? Absolutely. But what yeah. I would say is try not to go too expensive on okay. the rackets to start with. You can go like mid range probably about 50 60 pound okay. to start with um i know some guys from the local league that are around here um mm. that's what they do and they, it's suitable for them because yeah. you don't want to be ripped off at all no and i guess you can test them out can't you and then yeah and go absolutely yeah. happy days that's what we like to hear um <laughs> so let's see if we've got any more if you've got any questions for kelly don't be shy <laughs> I thought that was wine then. I thought you were doing an Alison Brown. Just squash. <laughs> oh, was she on the wine? Yes, I said I said to her, if you're on the wine, you couldn't let me know. I would have had a gin. <laughs> she's, she's lovely. You know, she's fantastic. Yeah, she is a legend. Yes. Um, so what's your favourite shot in table tennis? Uh, forehand topspin. Um, I think my game is, especially when I was peak, I was a four on top spin player towards the end yeah. of my career as I got older um I had to focus a lot on my backhand um backhand reloop yeah. but I would say always trying to serve and hunt for my four on top spin to try and dominate the play what's yeah. yours <laughs> good question <laughs> <laughs> um forehand <laughs> that's what I've been saying I'm, a, I'm still a beginner. Okay. I'm, I'm, I started in 2014 properly. Okay, so when you come down to the uni, maybe we can work on that. Yeah, that'll be amazing. Yeah, excellent. You, you know, I'll just get it out there early. You know, <laughs> if you'd like to come and visit British Army Table Tennis, <laughs> do a coaching session, or present the prizes, that'll be amazing. No problem. No, that'll be awesome. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, my aim is just to get it on the table, and I've got away with it. <laughs> Do you know what though? That's a good place to start because what do you have to do? You just have to get the ball on the table. So, yeah. but um, <laughs> that's the aim of the game. I know but, exactly. Yeah, I know, but sure keep I like it do. simple. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Just get the ball on the table. I just get told you're doing tennis shots. I'm like, <laughs> but um, no, I've really enjoyed it. I've noticed it's a very sociable sport, and I think you you'd agree with that. Um, yeah, it's really good. I think that's what's quite one of the things that I really like about table tennis. It doesn't matter like how old you are, how good you are. Um, you can just put a table in a room and you can have someone that's obviously at a top level or someone that's, at, let's say, at a lower level or a beginner. Um, yeah. And you can just play. Um, yeah. And I think that's one thing that I really do like about, about the sport. It is very, very social. Yeah, you're right, because you can have, I think, some of my older family members, they're about 80 plus, they're playing, they'll, you know, hit like the tennis. And then, you know, because a few people we get, you know, 
you know, because we're in the army, mm -hmm. we're, you know, they're like, oh, a bit of ping pong. But actually, when they look at us in the gym hall and see, you know, the, you know, better level players, the league players, <coughs> they actually realise it's a very technical game. Yeah. Realise so. The amount of times people are just like, you play ping pong, just yeah. you just do that, and you just like, it's yeah. not towards the. Yeah, it used to really frustrate me, but then towards the end, I was just like, yeah, just 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 do that. <laughs> it must be frustrating because it's a very skilled sport and I've only realised having played doubles with obviously some of our top female players they do all the spin I'm not that advanced but the top guys obviously do it and I couldn't even get anything back so it yeah. is a skilled sport and I think people need to respect that a bit more I think. yeah it is and I think that's also one of the reasons why it hasn't really t taken off on TV as well as it should do because, yeah. like you said there, with this, the amount of spin and stuff that people get on their serves, it's, it's really difficult to see that. Mm. Um, I mean, people that play the game, they can understand that if someone makes an error on the receive or if someone blocks a topspin off the end, straight away we know, oh, that's because there's too much spin on, um, etc. But if you're just like a novice and you just turn the telly on to, yeah. and you see table tennis, and they're just like, well, why have they missed that shot? Yeah. Um, which is such a shame because I think table tennis is so fantastic to watch. And if you get, if you get people from the uh, members of the public watching um, high quality table tennis, they're just like, Oh my gosh, like, how do you do that? Why are you so far away from the table? Like how, yeah. how do you get it on? Yeah. Um, and they are genuinely impressed. Yeah. Um, so I would just hope that in times to come, it can really take off on the, on telly um because again that's just a fantastic way of promoting our sport yeah definitely i agree um someone's just asked hi kelly do you have any routines or drills for practicing double skips double skips we're trying to get our youth squad to do double skips right now we've challenged them uh we've set them a target of 50 double skips and they've met that and now we're on 100 oh, double wow. skips um but what they've been doing is they've been watching videos on youtube mm. because obviously it's very difficult for us to 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 help them with that um in person but what i would say is try not to go um try not to go too fast on them as well but also kind of do single skips and then add in a double do singles add in a double so you can try and perfect your your technique and try and find that routine because the hardest part of double skips is just doing one which sounds yeah. ridiculous, but it is quite difficult. But as soon as you can do one and then two straight mm -hmm. away, it's very, it's very. You, you'll find yourself hitting twenty plus thirty plus. Um, so have a look on YouTube because there's some really good videos on there um, that have some drills for double yeah. skipping. Yeah, that's really useful. So obviously um, you're probably away from the training hall and everything. Have you had to do online visual sort of? coaching you know if your players got tables at home I don't know we've I've been doing quite a lot with the uh England youth uh program so I um help uh Alan Cook Matthew Stanforth and Gavin Evans with the younger squad so we have the hopes program and the aspire so they range from nine-year-olds up to 14-year-olds um, and we've been having three sessions a week um, yeah. with them we've been doing some live fitness sessions uh, which we've been very grateful to have the likes of Tintin um, yeah. Sam Walker Paul and uh, Liam uh, yeah. Pitchford join on to lead a session which is fantastic for our younger players to have a physical yeah. session led by by those guys mm -hmm. um, and also we've been having some uh, nutrition uh, flexibility sessions and some uh, psychology sessions with them um and actually it's it's been really good to see because they've had what like 12 weeks now and from the bit from where they were to where they are now every single one of them has has improved um and it's it's fantastic to see and it's just making us so much um we can't wait to get back into the hall really just to see their improvements on table some of them have got robots. Some of them are lucky to have a sibling that they can practice with. Others haven't got a robot and haven't got access to the table, but they've been practicing their serves like on the carpet to try and get them to go around the cones and stuff okay. like that. Um, so how they've committed um, to the work is, is excellent. Um, but it's good to have that contact time with them 
as well because I think that's important. Yeah. So um, when you played, did you have any rich rituals or superstitions or mantras? Um, yeah, I used to. I never realised that I used to do it until someone pointed it out. Yeah. Really bizarre. But I used to fold the towel in a certain way. And I always had to wipe the table in a certain way. It sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud. But I guess it's just a superstitious superstition that then once you've done it once, twice, then yeah. I always have to do it. Um, and I always had to place my bat in a certain position oh, wow. at the end of the table. Um, I guess that's always part of the routine. I guess. Yeah, routine's key though, isn't it, I guess? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, to mix it up a bit, um, what's your favourite <laughs> holiday destination? Oh, great question. Uh, <sighs> I was very lucky enough to go to Fiji. Oh, I've been there. Amazing. Oh my gosh, but isn't it amazing? We have a lot in the army and I'm just thinking, why have you sorry, joined the fantastic British army? You know, but I understand, I do understand the real reason why and behind it, you know, employment and stuff. And, yeah. it's, you know, it's great we have a mixture of people joining the British Army and uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, it's a beautiful country, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. We went after the 2006 uh, Commonwealth Games that was in Australia. So we kind of, we went there on the way back and, oh, my gosh, it was amazing. Yeah. I had 14 days there and it's just paradise. don't want to go back. <laughs> no, it is. It is just pure heaven. Well, I don't think the army would have approved of that. But, uh, um, do you have any other hidden talents? Do you sing? Can you bake? Are you, are you a gardener, secret gardener? Um, no, although during lockdown, I think I've joined the rest of the country in painting the fence and the shed because yeah. I think that was the, the most common thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, other than obviously just playing football, because you know, not many people n knew that really, that I had to make a choice between table tennis and football. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any secret talents. I guess that's a bit boring. I'm sure you do. Um, <laughs> I'm sure your family know. <laughs> yeah, luckily they're not watching, so. Oh, that's good, <laughs> <laughs> um, fav have you been watching a lot of Netflix or films or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I finally just finished Suits. Oh, okay. So, yeah, obviously, and I used to be really one of my favourite series ever is Grey's Anatomy. Oh, okay. Um, absolutely love it. Watched every single season, but since the little one, I've just found that really difficult to start <laughs> to, to watch series um, anymore. Uh, but yeah, managed to watch Suits during lockdown. Um, which is a fantastic series. What, what, what about you? Yeah, I watched that New People. That was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Not for children. Um, <laughs> and I've just been watching a mixture of stuff, films, and I want to watch the James Bond collection. I've been meaning to, and it's on my to-do list. Okay. Uh, but I've been watching a bit of Harry Potter too, so that's quite... Odd. Yeah, absolutely love Harry Potter. I love can the first one. Yeah, literally can just watch it over and over again. Yeah, no, it's just magical, isn't it? Um, but, nice little um, pun there that like you said there, magical. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I realise I'm not that bright, honestly. I don't know how I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, serious face now. Okay. <laughs> Do you like to study? Um, what was your favourite uh, subject that you studied whilst at school? Um, do I like to study? Honestly, No. No. And my favourites, I had two favourite subjects, obviously okay. one sports, obviously, yeah. um, and then the second one was geography, I guess okay. because I used to travel quite a lot, um, mm. I got interested in that side of things, so yeah, sports and, and geography. Oh, brilliant, so are you good at trick shots on the table tennis table? Uh, Have I missed them? Ish, ish, I kind of let... Let the uni players do that because they are very competitive. I'm doing all the trick shots around the net. And always before, some there's a couple of the guys that when we finish our one-to-ones, oh, could you just hit that off the side just so I could finish on around the net? Yeah, you go for it. <laughs> you go for it. If that's what makes you feel good, absolutely fine. Yeah, brilliant. So, <clears throat> so you do one-on-one -on -one and then you do group coaching as well? 
that yeah. works, is it? So we do, um, so the programme consists of one-to-one -one training and, and group group sessions. Um, and the times, li literally they can play like all day if they wanted to, if their lectures okay. allow it. Um, we're really, really lucky with the support that the club gets from the university itself. Um, so we, there's a morning session which is seven till uh, 8.30, um, which has kind of been renamed as the Tintin session. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, but jokes aside, so they can practice, they have the option to practice there before, yeah. before going to lectures. And then we have from 10 till 4, um, myself and the assistant coach that's at the university, Mate, uh, we will be delivering one-to-one -one sessions with with the club players um, if when their lectures allow it. And yeah. then uh, five till eight, um, we have a, a group session. So it's pretty full on. I was going to say, um, it's very busy. Yeah, but it's, it's great. Um, yeah. And I'm really proud that that's the programme that we have. Um, and also in that programme, they have support from the physio. They have their own S&C programme. Um, they have access to the nutritionist, the psychologist. Um, so it's a really professional programme um, that the university athletes have. And yeah, it's, it's amazing really to think that a university can deliver such a fantastic program like that. Yeah, looks amazing. That sounds amazing because obviously at our last event we had seventy <laughs> turn up. So it was a bit daunting. I think I didn't think, I think we weren't expecting that huge number. So yeah. um, you know, um, yeah, definitely. If you did visit, if you've got any tips to pass on, we'll definitely take your expertise for sure. Um, sorry, <laughs> here they are. <laughs> I know a few comments there. Um, the mm -hmm. pandemic, you probably heard of him. He does all these trick shots. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, what advice would you give to your younger self if you could? Um, I would probably say about staying in the moment. Try and stay in the moment a bit more. Um, like I said before, earlier on, that I was. I always used to try and focus too much on the outcome, um, and I would kind of get a bit too stressed, and then I would let matches kind of run away from me really and I would just get too just too stressed about things that I couldn't change really yeah. um so I would say just try and stay in the moment and just to try and take it one one ball at a time um yeah. it's I know it sounds really simple but I, I know it's not um but it just comes from just trying to practice that and it all comes from literally practicing it in the practice hall because if you practice that that way of practicing, then it will transfer into the matches, which again is what I found after um, the Commonwealth in 2010 to what I did differently in 2014. I had a different mindset. Yeah. Um, so I kind of approached my practices as if I was approaching matches, if that, yeah. makes, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's um, a great, great advice, actually, because I think we've got to learn, I think the army players to pretend we're more in a actual match than just yeah. having a practice little match, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. take the pressure then we might get them wins over the RAF and things like yeah. that. Yeah, you almost need to try and it's really difficult because even if you play matches in practice, you don't have the same like butterflies as if you was to play yeah. in like a, a, a competition. But you almost need to just try and treat it as it if it is. Um and the one thing that helped me um in the practice was to set challenges so I would kind of play matches if I was playing an exercise mm -hmm. um I would play a match in my head yeah. so can I keep the ball let's just say I'm playing back and middle back and wide um and then if I win the point okay that's I'm winning one love if I lost the next shot obviously it's one one and I'd play matches against my opponent just so I could get my mindset into a into a match match mindset let's say um so yeah, I would maybe try try doing that and try setting yourself challenges in your practice for a match mindset. Yeah, so another different question now. Do you have any fears or phobias like spiders? Or oh spiders? my gosh, yeah, spiders. I just, I can't cope with a spider no matter really? how big or small. So um, you would have a pet one though. Oh, <laughs> honestly, absolutely horrendous. Even if it's tiny, I just have to walk away and 
I'm like Laura, could you get can you get a spider out, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible. Snakes, you don't mind them then? Uh, I, I don't know. I think I would. I could touch a snake over a spot. I don't. I couldn't touch okay. a spider. Oh, okay. Someone's asked favorite exercise. No, that's back and middle, back and wide. Such a good exercise because you can make it. It's and also that exercise is for all levels. Like I said, you can make it when you give yourself challenges. It, it, it's it's a great exercise. It's got technical. It's got your movement. You can practice your timing. It's it's a really good all round exercise. And the U O N T T guys, they love it. That's what we like to hear. We love it. <laughs> love it. Um, so, what are your short term and long term goals? Would you say? Is um, it and has it changed now? You're not competing, or I guess you've got slightly different ones now. You yeah. Um, I guess with the like on the uni side, like I said, the main goal now is that I really want to try and take over Europe. Um, really try and achieve winning gold medals at the European University Championships. I think that's, like I said, that's something that we can achieve um, with the with the players that we've got there. Um, and fingers crossed, we still get more players in to strengthen our squad. Um, yeah, and once we've done that, who knows, maybe we could do that on a world stage. Um, but for now, I try not to think too far ahead. Yes. Um, but yeah, on a European stage, definitely. And also with the so we have five teams in the men's side and five teams yep. in the women's side um the top two three teams now we've been quite dominant in the league and the cups so also what would be quite good if we could try and strengthen um the lower teams to try and win their leagues as well so we can just have a complete clean sweep and someone um, else just put that who's that Yep, good, great minds think alike. So I hope we're on the same plan. Um, You're on the same page, aren't you? I love yeah. It. So hopefully, then every league, every cup is yeah. UON, green and gold, winning, winning those titles. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's try and make that happen. No, we'll be following the progress. But um, I don't know if you're aware. Um, part of army sport now, you can have um, UOTC, University Officer Training Corps. Yeah. Um, get involved i don't know if you have any players amongst your t setup at the moment that you're aware uh, of that we could hear about i'll have i'll check i'll double check that i know um uh, there's one guy that's involved with the army i'll double check see if he's see if he's involved in that and then i'll uh come back to you yeah dan shelley do you know dan shelley have you heard of no, him? No, we haven't. So yeah, this is fantastic. So yeah, if we, yeah, if you're happy to drop him a line and just Absolutely. let him know about the army table tennis, he can uh, he can compete, um, which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get him to. Uh, I'll introduce you. Yeah, that's great. Um, have we got any more questions? We've only got. Oh, he's a reservist, apparently. Yeah. UONTT coming in with all the information. Yes, I love it. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. That's even better because yeah, that's even better for us. If he's yeah. honest, I think. Um, so yeah, um, has anyone got any more questions? You know, we've got about five minutes left before we get cut off. You know, when I was chatting to Sam Walker, I had to cut him off. Oh. It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> so every day is a school day. I didn't realize it was an hour, but um, I didn't realize that. No, I didn't, but um, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Um, yeah, so we'll tidy this up in a second. Give it no problems. a few seconds. Hopefully there's a few more questions. Anyone got a final question before we say goodbye? <laughs> no, it's been really fun, actually. It's been uh, great chatting again, actually. I think yeah, no, time. thank you so much for, for having me on. Loved it. Um, yeah, but yeah, been... we'll... 100% will arrange this uh, UONTT and British Army, the Army match, 100%. And then yeah. hopefully when things have also died down, we can get get you lot over um, and maybe have like a mixed training session as well. Yeah, that would be... I think that would be really good. Yeah, thank you for that. That would just be amazing. It's, um, yeah, you know, we just want to build on, you know, get more training camps, more, you know... 
expertise our way, you know, so we can improve our teams and set up and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great. Um, be re like, yeah, really looking forward to try and set that up. Yeah, we have our inter services around um, usually March, April, or this time it was meant to be May, but obviously rescheduled. But yeah, you know, it's it's a bit hit and miss because it depends on which service takes the lead to organise it. Mm -hmm. But ideally, if it could be before that, but we'll obviously we'll we can discuss that offline. Yeah, yeah, we the guys will be so excited for that because they're after more fixtures, and I guess you guys are. Yeah, hundred percent. Does someone's put? Have you got any tips for anyone who wants to? come to university i think that's what it says especially for the table tennis in a few years time just get in touch um get in touch with me um because i can try and find out uh what course you're wanting to do because also there's obviously um restrictions on the grades that you need to to meet to get onto the course but in terms of joining the table tennis club more the merrier yeah. um we just want as many people being involved in our table tennis club as possible um like i said we have a a wide range of standard um from elite down to social players so there's no bar really set for that um so yeah more the merrier to, to come and join the university table tennis club Fantastic. That's a great way to finish. You know, <laughs> British Army Table Tennis, the committee, the players, just want to say thank you. And no, thank you for having me. No, it's it's fantastic. I can't believe how many lives we've had. Oh, no, it's amazing. Keep it know, we, we feel so lucky, you know, because we've had, you know, loads. You know, it's fantastic. And, you know, we look forward to seeing you soon. And, yeah, take care. Yeah, perfect. We'll be in touch about this match. Definitely, and I'll share all this on social media, and thanks for sharing everything prior to it as well. No problem, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> That's Instagram Live, number 11 done. Take care, guys. See you on Monday. Dave Weatherill.